Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. Bonjour. Guten Morgen. Salvete. Grazie. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. There are more languages. I won't bore you with them. But guess what? This is what Sunday? Pentecost. Ah, what happened on Pentecost? Languages broke out. Let us stand, please. Turn with me to your bulletin for our call to worship. There are different gifts. The same spirit gives them. And there are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord we serve. God's work through different men and women in different ways. But it is the same God who achieves his purpose through them all. Each one is given a gift by the Holy Spirit. To use it for the common good. Together we are the body of Christ. And individually members of him. Though, Though we have different gifts, gifts together, together we are a ministry of reconciliation. Led by the risen Spirit of Christ, we work together, pray to make Christ's church useful in the world. Remain standing, please, and turn to him 289. On Pentecost they get verses one, three, and four. take the time to read our prayer of confession and commitment and ask yourself what does this prayer have to do with me and our church and the world in which we together live and after that time of reflection we will be in prayer together.
And now let us be in prayer. Gracious God, awaken the gift of your spirit within us that will fill us, this church, our home, away from home. Free to try new ways of living, free to accept our acceptance, and free to forgive ourselves and others. Free to love, free to laugh, and sing, in spite of our differences. Free to see and listen and wonder again at the gracious mystery of things and persons. And Lord, teach us how to dance, to turn around and come down to where we want to be in the arms and hearts of your people, and in that we may praise and enjoy your and love. Amen. Loving Spirit, let us sing that. 293. First reading this morning comes to us from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 20. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you 
and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before the long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. And reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, and continuing with chapter 6 through 12. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this is all surpassing power is from God, not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to the death for Jesus' sake, so that in his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you.
So, oh, we're all good. I could have written this <coughs> meditation out in German, but probably only one of you would have understood part of it. But I'll do it in English. <coughs> Pentecost. 50 days after, anyone know that? 50 days after what? Passover, right? Pentecost is a metaphorical story written by Luke trying to communicate to his listeners and later in written form <clears throat> that this good news of Jesus Christ is not just for the house of Israel, it's for the world, for everyone. Not just one language, but all languages. If you know the New Testament, Matthew and Mark, and Luke, you will see in those three Gospels already the intention to tell listeners and readers that this good news of the cross and resurrection of Jesus is for the whole world. How many of you know there are two feedings of 5,000? One 5,000, right? What was left over? <clears throat> Anybody know? Wake up, Bert. Bushels. Twelve baskets. And why twelve baskets? Why not five or six? How many disciples were there? Good. You, you don't, you're right on target. Uh, how many tribes of Israel, of all Israel, how many? Twelve. Okay, you got that. All right. You must have learned something in Sunday school in this church. <laughs> However, there's a second feeding on the other side of the water here, which is known as the Greek side. And 4,000, <clears throat> excuse me, how many baskets were left over? Come on. Seven. <clears throat> you get a you get a C minus, okay? <clears throat> um, there are two ways of looking at that. Maybe it's kind of a confession on the writer. Moses was told to destroy seven nations on the way to the promised land, which he did. However, there's another way of looking at that. At that time, there were seven known nations of the world. Either way, it works. This good news that the one who gave his life sacrificially is still alive in spirit. Interesting the passage here. I will not leave you orphaned. Huh. Who were the most vulnerable people in that time? <clears throat> Widows and orphans. And you see that throughout the scriptures. Widows and orphans. They were the most vulnerable. They were the most get-at-able. Um, Jesus didn't want his followers to be like orphans. He promised his spirit would be with them. <clears throat> How do we know that? Jesus never went to the big cities until towards the end of his life, Jerusalem. He went from village to village, and he had maybe one simple message. <clears throat> Repent, turn around, <clears throat> and look and see what's coming. What's coming is not the reign and rule of the Caesars of this world, but the reign and rule of what life is like when God rules this world. And it is different. And how did he show that? What was he most criticized for? Who did he hang out with? Every parent wants to know who their kids are hanging out with. I've done a lot of counseling for parents and kids. I used to go up to this school. They had a room for me to counsel kids, and the first thing I tried to find out, who are you hanging out with? <clears throat> as soon as I found that out, I can tell you what kind of kid they were and what kind of trouble they were in. And their parents always want to know this. I want to know who my kid's hanging out with. Well, you should know. He hung out with 
people probably none of you <coughs> want to hang out with either. Tax collectors. <coughs> Who in America likes a tax collector, right? <laughs> Except in those days, tax collectors put a lot in their pocket. And they were people of Israel. They were Jewish people cheating on their own people. But Jesus did deny them table fellowship. Prostitutes, Jesus didn't deny them table fellowship. Anybody who wanted to be part of his fellowship were invited to share a meal together. <clears throat> now that may just pass over you, but if you lived in that day, in that age, <clears throat> sharing a meal was sacred and you only shared it with those you loved. Those were part of your clan. Those were part of your family. You didn't share it with everybody. Jesus was different. And having been accepted unconditionally at something so sacred as a table brought them great joy. <clears throat> a great sense of, I must be worth something. I am valuable. I am loved. And when he left that place, Maybe never to come back. But guess what happened? Every time they gathered together for a meal, they felt what? His presence with them. 2,000 years later, we do communion, and we share that same idea, that same feeling. For when we have open table fellowship, we don't exclude anybody. There is a sense of joy and love. And that's when we sense the very spirit of Christ. Pentecost should remind us that we need to be open to the possibility of sensing that spirit. And sometimes we're so individualistic with our religion and our practice, so busy, we don't take the time to realize if we're open to the possibility the spirit of Christ is right with us. How many know the author of the book, Seven Habits of the Seven? Habits of successful people. What was his name? Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Yeah, librarian. Who wrote that? Covey. Oh, yeah. He's on a subway. He writes on this, right? He's on a subway. You ever been on a subway in New York? You haven't lived till you've been on a subway in New York. <clears throat> Trust me, many, many times daughter was going to school down there, and for eight or ten years I was on the board of Auburn Seminary down in Broad Broadway, 125th or 29th. <clears throat> you ride on the subway, it's a new experience. You don't talk to people, they either have their phones or they're reading the paper, or they're snoozing away, or they're hanging on and going back and forth. He's on the subway. <clears throat> had a tough day, is very tired. All he wants to do is relax, even though it's crazy. And he's sitting next to this African-American young guy, and he's kind of snoozing, like he's in a stupor or something. <clears throat> and his kids are running up and down, making hell, disturbing everybody. And he's getting madder and madder and madder. And finally he says to him, why don't you take care of your kids? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. We're in a daze. So are they. We're just coming from the hospital. Their mother died. Pew. <laughs> he said, suddenly I had a, a new way of looking at life. Suddenly I had a rush of compassion that I thought I never had. Suddenly I saw everything with new eyes. And I tried to be present to him, giving him a chance to talk, tell his story, and ask if there's any way I can be of any help. He said, that changed my life. Sometimes, as Harold Kushner would put it, God sends his angels along to wake you up. as to what's going on around you and where you're needed and where you bring the Spirit of Christ to a situation. So 
since I've been here, I've held, you call it funerals, I call it celebrations of life. Someone named Mansky, do you remember her? Remember where she used to sit? I used to tease her when she'd go by my office in her, her uh, walker. I said, can't you go a little faster? I've got to get up there to preach. She would laugh. Joyce Sanders. Remember him? Shorty. He used to sit right over there with his suspenders. I used to tease him. Do you need suspenders and a belt, Shorty? Yeah, I said. He always gave me readings, humorous ones. Some I couldn't read from the pulpit, but they were still humorous. William Barry, you remember him? Where he used to sit? Joan Hansen. <clears throat> Her son got married Friday night. And Victor was so excited and wanted to recreate and talk to us about, talk about memory, his marriage in this church. And even after rehearsal, I was ready to go home. He said, can we put those candles out we had when Joan was here? Sure enough, he brought out the candelabra. And he filled them with oil. He remembered and sensed her presence. Bonnie Leach, you remember her? Cheryl Clark, you remember her? And of course, Mert Odin. Do you remember Mert? He sat four rows up from the back with Sally. I kept saying Bert instead of Mert. I did it once, and I finally corrected myself. Here is what we prayed <clears throat> together at every one of these services. It's kind of like a Pentecost. Because in a service, I encourage people, it's OK to share your feelings. Don't hide your feelings from someone you love who has died. That's unhealthy. Share your feelings of hurt and anger. Because if you share your feelings, you will be filled with memory. Like the disciples. That's what the Pentecost story is. They shared their feelings of loss, yet they were filled with memories and sensed the very spirit of Christ in their lives. If you share your feelings and you're flooded with memories, only then can you celebrate the gift of their life. Here's what we pray at every service. In the rising of the sun and going down, we remember them. <clears throat> In the blowing of the wind and the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of buds and the rebirth of spring, we remember them. <clears throat> In the blueness of the sky and the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. Ah, when we are weary and need of strength, we remember them. They give us strength. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. They give us a sense of strength in their presence. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. Who do you remember in your life?
who will listen to you when you want to talk at night and you're feeling down? I'm sure there's somebody. There is for me. I'm not into spooky spirit stuff, but my wife is. And so is one of my daughters. <laughs> my wife, and she probably will get mad at me for sharing this, her sister, her older sister, was, was dying. And she used to take trips on the weekend to downstate medical center to blood transfers for her, her sister. Again and again and again, trying to save her life. She also did a bone marrow transplant for her sister. And her sister died suddenly. She always felt guilty that she didn't do enough to save her sister's life. Imagine carrying that around. Now here's the spooky part. <laughs> My daughter Lauren, she's into this, uh, I don't know, you can go to somebody who you can share your life with and they will kind of listen and give you feedback of what they think they know of your past and stuff like that. Now, my wife's in Omaha. Lauren is in Washington, D.C. This person Lauren was talking to did not know Gail did not know about her sister. But she said to Lauren, I have this feeling that there's someone out there who wants to tell your mother that it's okay that they died. <laughs> and, and she shared that one night with, with Gail. She wept the whole night, feeling that somehow the spirit of her sister some way communicated to her that it was okay. For me, that's spooky, not to Gail. Our scripture says that we have this gift, this spirit of Christ, this living spirit of Christ. It doesn't come from us. It's not innate. It comes to us as a gift. Now, we can either recognize that, spend time meditating on that possibility that it's within us. It's in clay jars. <laughs> I like that piece. Karl Barth, one of my professors, I think it was Karl Barth, who said, yeah, we're like broken down cathedrals, but we're cathedrals nevertheless because the Spirit of Christ lives within us. God speaks to us in Christ in very ordinary ways. The Bible is filled with that. And the one who wrote that Habits of Seven Successful People quoted, he felt like <clears throat> Harold Kushner would have told him, there's an angel there trying to wake you up, that you could be present to someone. Sometimes, Things happen to us, and we put on the Christ Spirit glasses, and the world looks different. We feel different. And sometimes we need things to shake us up. You know what happened to Emma Till, right? 1955, it was in a store. And the lady said, he whistled at me. They dragged Emmett Till out of that store, beat him, so terribly, hung him up while everyone cheered. 
his mother did something that needed to be done, I think. Maybe sending that angel <laughs> to wake us up. She refused, refused to have a closed casket. <clears throat> that woke a lot of people up. That was a turning point in our own country. A few years later, because of that, Rosa Parks decided, I'm not going to sit in the back of the bus. I'm tired of this. She sat in the front. Changed the world completely when they saw that. The Emmett Pettus Bridge. All they did were marching for to vote. And they were savagely, savagely beaten. That woke a lot of people up. Someone has suggested <clears throat> that maybe, <clears throat> and this won't happen, God, I hope not, <clears throat> but if it did, it might change a lot of people's understanding about AR-15 rifles. <clears throat> Imagine opening up a casket <clears throat> for those kids whose bodies are unrecognizable. Parents had to wait. Couldn't recognize their own kids, so they had to have tests, blood tests, to see if that was my kid. Think about that. How that might change the world. <clears throat> I don't know. <clears throat> what I do know is that when you are aware and open yourself up to the possibility that the spirit of the living Christ is within you. It may cause you to look at the world a little differently. With regard to your finances, with regard to your family, with regard to your community, with regard to your country. It might change. I don't know. But do not forget, you know how we end our service. The spirit of the living Christ is within you to remind you that you are loved unconditionally. Once you are aware of that, as those followers of Jesus were aware of that, the presence of his spirit in their lives, they changed the world. And you know, so can we. bulletin somewhere. Someone tell me what page we're going to sing. 291. What? 291. 291. Please stand with me and let us sing. 291.
spirit of Pentecost, when we speak about our closeness to each other, and the sense of the spirit of Christ with us, I found this reading called Shoulder to Shoulder. I'm going to read it for me now. I sat between two noble ladies today while we were shoulder to shoulder in church. Day was hot, sweat rings formed around my neck while two noble ladies shouldered me on the Lord's day. On my left shoulder sat a woman about 45 years old. The laughter lines etched around her eyes were there from years of practice. Her eyes laughed a greeting my way while we sat there shoulder to shoulder. All through the service, she had happy feet, happy hands, happy hair, happy smiles. <laughs> happy rubs off when you sit so close. Before long, I was happy too. I was happy to be there, shouldered with this woman. Happy for her laughing eyes, glad for the songs which made my feet get happy. Happy for the words of life flowing out to me. On the other side sat an old saint, barely able to move in response to the moving of the Holy Ghost, which stirred our very souls. She shouldered me gently, and I gentled my shoulder, her shoulder, which was bowed and stooped with age. I gentled her leathery hands, which barely gripped mine in greeting, and reached for her gentle smile when she offered it to me. Her eyes were squinted with age and wrinkle-worn from seeing things I had yet to see. Everything about this woman cried experience and wisdom. I longed to have the wisdom that was on my right side infect me as did the happiness that was on my left side, as we all sat shoulder to shoulder on the Lord's Day. Now may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please exchange the peace.
surely has given me the look, so I better, she gives me this every week, so I better not fail, right, Shirley? Birthdays, Jennifer Stevens, June 7th. Lana Cook, June 10th. Hunter, where are you? Not Hunter's, where'd she go? Anyway, Sandy's husband. His birthday is June 11. Good, glad you joined us. <laughs> uh, I, have, I have, let me give you the bad news first. <clears throat> they came to inspect our boiler which, by the way, kind of went out just before the wedding on Friday night. But it was turned back on, thanks to Valerie. Um, but it didn't pass in expect inspection. So, you got 30 days. Got any extra money in the bank, you guys? We gotta get that thing fixed. That's the bad news. The good news is we're here. And we're gonna continue to be here. And your search committee is working doubly hard uh, to get someone new. However, <laughs> I'm in trouble for saying this. Outside you have pictures of all your previous pastors. The one before me was three and a half years. She has her picture up there. I'm starting my fifth. <laughs> I don't have a robe, but maybe I can borrow one of those. It would make Joanne very happy. Oh, by the way, choir, good job. Your idea to wear the robe? Okay. All right. Um, I don't own one, so you won't see me in one. Anyway, uh, some other announcements. Um, Valerie spent hours doing all the mowing. And she gets, uh, not that she needs any, but she gets, as you will if you mow, some get out of church free cards, okay? Um, I had pizza by myself one Wednesday night for Faith on Fire, and I had pizza last time for the communicants by myself. So, we are going to postpone the um, communicants until September, and we're going to postpone the um, Wednesday night Faith on Fire until September, okay? By then, hopefully, you'll have a new pastor and let him or her take care of it, okay? I'm for that. How about you? Okay. Um, we have had meetings for the Daily Vacation Bible School, which will be in our church. And um, we will meet again. And we need volunteers to help. And some are coming forward. And we, signs are going to be up all over. And we may, in July, worship outside one of these Sundays. Um, it's up to the session. We may just sit around the lawn and have a service. And we will return, I hope, uh, August uh, evening services, just 45 minutes. Uh, I know some of you like that very much. Others, like Shirley, will go to the Methodist Church, and I can see her at the Methodist Church sitting there. <laughs> Sorry, Shirley, time to pick on you for a change. Um, any other announcements? Yes. The uh, choir and the bell choir will be having a uh, get together a potluck on Wednesday at 6:30 downstairs. Um, you guys are all welcome to join us. We're just celebrating the end of our season this year. So 6:30, bring a dish and bring friends and family. This coming Wednesday. Yep. Okay. I asked last week. I ask again. Anyone uh, wants to go with me to serve communion for shut-ins on Wednesday? Please let me know after church, and I will make the appropriate calls, and uh, we will go there together. 
Will the ushers please come forward? For the <coughs> and let us be in prayer once again together. <clears throat> Good and gracious God, we ask that you accept our offering and show us each day the part we are to take in your work as living witnesses of your Holy Spirit. This we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. <clears throat> Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Finally now, turn to him 459, O Word of God in Christ. that you help me with this benediction. Repeat after me. 
Let us stir up one another. Let us stir up one another. To love and good works. Not forgetting to worship together. But encouraging one another. Encouraging one another. You got it. Amen.